How much do you make a year before taxes? <laughs> oh. We're just going to wing it today, boys. Yeah. We're ready for steak dinner. Mm-hmm. All right, we are back for our final installment of Behind the Blind, brought to you by Tetra Hearing. Check them out, tetrahearing.com. It is our last one of this Wyoming trip here with High Plains Wing Shooters, and Aaron has so graciously decided to join us again tonight. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, so we'll just kind of talk about today's hunt. It was a little different than the first two days, obviously. The biggest thing I think that we were dealing with today was zero wind i mean and that's kind of the the big issue i think across the waterfowl you know you hunt anywhere you want wind right you need uh, wind to help push those birds down bluebirds you know bluebird day it was warmer today it got so warm like we were stripping layers off by the afternoon i mean i really you, wasn't you weren't <laughs> but me and it, aaron were comfortable it felt yeah, like inside the block i mean me and matt were like Oh, it was, man. I, I could have been, I would have been, if you, if I didn't need my white hoodie because of the snow, I would have been comfortable in a long sleeve crew neck shirt today. Matt, yeah. you but, were drenched this morning. Well, <laughs> he's, a, he's a sweaty man. I, I, I'm, hey, I'm he's well, a, I'm well insulated without clothes. He's so. a hard worker. Yeah. So I haul, I carry around a little extra weight, so it's extra work. No. We, uh, we had a great hunt though, right? We shot 20 birds. We shot our, yeah. our four man limit. We had fun doing it. And again, the majority of them were singles or pairs. Yeah, we we really Actually, only had one group. Yeah, three, and I think that three pack. We should, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Well, right, well, right there at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The big thing was this morning. It was it was cold. Like it was like eighteen degrees, fifteen degrees, something. It was really cold this morning, so that kept the birds from flying early. And I think we we do this thing where we call it a two dollar bet, and it is just something stupid we do. It's like. The dumbest stuff like oh well, i bet you two bucks you can't do this whatever so we did a two dollar bet on when we thought we were gonna shoot the first goose so we all threw out our time and i think q you were the the mm -hmm. green winner it was, we, mm -hmm. we actually owe you money yeah yeah we two uh, four we, six eight yeah eight, meant to tell you I, I gave you a two dollar discount on lunch today so yeah. oh well I guess you, I was owe, say you owe me dinner tonight. Oh. Ooh, free dinner hey, that would have been a better bet. this is why aaron's the best <laughs> but we didn't make that. That wasn't our bet. It was two dollars for you guys. So, <laughs> and it was what we shot the first bird at like nine nine 15. nine nine oh seven nine oh eight. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, wait, what? Well, what? I said nine fifty. Yeah, you said nine, and it was just a few minutes before that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, for people who don't know, and say it right, because I'm gonna mess it up. You can hunt all day. Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. On are, are the only days. The only days that you that can hunt, hunt geese all day. All day long. Yeah. Gotcha. You can hunt ducks all day, every day. Geese is just a one o'clock Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Gotcha. So today's Friday. So we had to stop at one and um, we hunted all the way until one. I think we shot our last goose at like, I don't know, 1230, 1240, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I think we had about 10 minutes yeah. when we started piling up. And then the crazy thing was as soon as we started picking up, there was a massive flurry of birds starting oh, to fly yeah. like a majority yeah. i would say the majority of the birds we saw were when we were picking up they sure. they knew it was one o'clock yeah, yeah. <laughs> their alarm went off and they said eh, i guess it's time to fly yeah yeah it's 15 minutes in and we we shoot another limit for sure yeah no doubt why is that aaron is that just just because it's the rules the rules are rules but um man i think so. so it's been like that as long as i can ever remember um long as i've been hunting geese but uh, i think it's more of a conservation type thing. Yeah, yeah just a way to keep pressure off. so i mean exactly. we do that in missouri with turkey with turkey yeah yeah, yeah. we have so you just take keep the pressure off of them allow them to do their thing give yep. them some time and and then they give you there's people who want the all-day hunt probably uh so, yeah so they give you <laughs> one day during the middle of the week and they give you the weekend exactly yeah. exactly and it's a uh, you know i mean everyone has a different opinion on it but uh, i i think we have the hunting that we have because they've they've conserved it the way sure. they have mm -hmm. over the years and um you know you, you can manage your field here's here's the misconception i just want to say that the misconception is that everyone says you can manage your own field well sure you can do that but you can't manage a communal resource right right so if everyone's hunting them all day every day and you're not 
it doesn't make the birds right. dumb to your field. Right. They're still conditioned from all the other fields. Yeah. Right. So I think the one o'clock shutoff is an amazing thing. So tell you started talking today too. Tell us the uh, they changed the birds to five bird limit this year, and you have an opinion about that too. Yep. Um, so, I mean, obviously anyone that knows me thinks I, I mean, they know that I think it's, it's absolutely crazy. And, um, I, I mean, if I, if I don't want to be one-sided about it, I, I understand. I mean, I understand. And their reasoning was for more hunter opportunity. I just find it hard to believe that one more bird makes a guy that much more satisfied. Um, However, you also said <laughs> that there was, you got, when you guys went out and you popped your four you know, with you had your wife and I don't know who sure. he said with you. Sure, yeah. It, no, and you I shot mean, four real quick. So it was like, okay, yeah, a day like that. Then yeah, I it, mean, we've we've definitely shot five. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've shot five. I'm not going to say that I haven't. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, it's a two-sided coin. Right. Yeah. And I, but, I mean, overall, I think the five is, I just I just don't see it. I'm, I'm not buying it. I don't. Not necessary. No, I, I don't think it's is, necessary at all. Is I, that something that they're going to talk about like on a year, like they talk about on a yearly thing? Like, hey, this year, you know, X amount of birds, we, we think the harvest rate was this, or we think the numbers are here, so we're going to keep it at five, or ah, maybe we should back it back down, down to four. I, I'll be interested to see, because um, like, if we, we were five a long, mm -hmm. long time ago, and then they yeah. dropped us to three for a year, and then we've been at four forever until this year we're back up to five. Right. So, I mean, with the bird flu going around, yeah. um, I'll be interested to see. Yeah. Because they they said that their where their quotas were, where they wanted the population around here was up, and that um, you know hunting was a great tool to right. bring to bring it back down. And and I agree, but yet again, I disagree because if hunting you was the tool to regulate it, why is it growing? Yeah, and you don't want to over you know you don't want to tap into that natural resource and then all of a sudden you say oh man a year later like ah man that was a bad idea well especially you know, like you're saying with the timing of the of bird flu and all that stuff i mean if that I had no one knew that was coming well no I, that's what i mean yeah. I, that would be a coincidental thing but Absolutely. if that had a dramatic toll and you increased it to five birds this year yeah. maybe you know maybe you overstep your goal yep. by, by a large margin and that could be and you know at the end it's just like i said it's that everyone has an opinion i have my opinion not right not wrong just different from yeah. everyone else's I'd like to see him go back down to four. I think we did awesome at four for this many years. Right. If it's not broke. Don't fix it. Yeah. But um, until then, we'll just we'll keep plugging along. Yeah. It's funny because we, we've talked about this before. You know, so in the uh, Mississippi flyway here, you know, obviously Missouri, right? We get three geese in Missouri. We can hop 20 minutes over to Kansas and shoot six in the central. And so we joke around, and it's like, oh, when we're in Missouri, and you get a really good hunt, right? And you're like, oh, man, we shot, our, you know, there's four of us out. We shot 12 geese. We could have shot so many more. You know, you want to shoot your limit. Everyone gets so hung up on that word limit. Like, sure. oh, I got my limit. I got my limit. Well, sometimes when you're having a rough hunt, you're happy you only get to shoot three because you can still get your limit. So yeah. When we go to Kansas, mm -hmm. we'll shoot. It's, it's crazy how that, that limit number can almost affect how you feel about the hunt. Oh, at least for some huge. people, because we can shoot, you know, 15 birds in Missouri. I'm going to throw these numbers up. We can throw, we can shoot 15 birds in Missouri, and we're like, oh, man, we shot our limit. That was a cool hunt. And then we go to Kansas, and you shoot 15 when you could shoot 30 in the hunt. And you're like, oh, man, we only shot 15 out of 30. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, if we were in Missouri, we would have been super happy. And, and you're, and you're 10 limit. miles apart. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. it's all it's all in people's heads, yeah. right? And yeah. we've gotten to the point, I don't, do I love going out there and just beating them up and, and, and beating them at their own game and shooting a limit. Yeah, absolutely. But like, I don't get hung up and like, Oh man, we were only, we should have got three more. We could have got our limit. Like that ruined the hunt. No, it's about the hunt. Yep. It's about having fun. It's about being out so there with your buddies. Yeah. We joke around all the time that we, we may not shoot a limit of birds, but we're going to limit out on fun. Yeah, you absolutely. Bet. That's where we're at with it. And, and uh, you know, maybe someone's watching this and, and laughing because they live on the East coast and they're like, we get to shoot one. You yeah. get to go out and well, put a bunch of effort to what, shoot one. I mean, it's been not too many years ago that Missouri was. It's been a while. Has it been? Am I that yeah. old? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You yeah, are. I am. Sorry. It's okay. So what's your, I mean, what's your guys' opinion? I mean, is, is all the travels that you guys do and you go state to state, flyway to flyway, and you, I mean, you see, I have to imagine that, um, like, when you come here, things are relatively the same. Um, yeah. You go to other places, things are relatively the same, like yeah. with their limits and their rules. Like, like, what's your opinion on it? It's, do you think it's bigger really, limits, or do you think bigger limits produce more opportunity no, on a day-to-day -day basis? I don't think so. I I think the big thing, 
I mean, I, and, and maybe this is my own soapbox, but I think the biggest problem for hunter opportunity or new hunter opportunity is permission. And there's getting to be so many people, and, and Kansas is probably the worst of them all, is every Tom, Dick, and Harry has a guide service. You don't have to do any testing. You don't have to, you can just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to make an LLC. I'm going to be a guide. And then you run into the fact that now they're paying farmers $50 a gun per guy to come out and hunt for a day rate. So then you just want to go knock with your buddies and say, hey, George, can I go hunt your pond tomorrow? And he says, well, how much are you going to pay me? Sure. I'm like, well, I'm not a guide. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm, it's just me and four of my buddies that want to yeah. go. Well, if a guide was here, he'd pay me 200 bucks. That's like, Especially if you're 16, 17, 18-year-old kid that's trying to get into it. Yeah. Right? yeah. You can't afford so that. That, 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 yeah. that gets to be tough. The evolution of how things have gone with hunting has changed dramatically. Yeah. With the permission, especially. Oh, it's, it's yeah. becoming big money. I mean, it's a money game. That's what's right. becoming. Yeah. And I also think, though, the uh, for Missouri, I think, especially where we're at in Can like the Kansas City area, I think with the bird numbers we get, we could go up to four. I think we could go up to four. That was that was what I was gonna say kind of generically and, and I like I can't say what Wyoming is, I can't say what Kansas is, but I think the bigger thing is if you have a proportionate limit to how difficult it should be to shoot that limit. Yeah. Right. So if your limit is six it should be the same difficulty to shoot those six as you go over to Missouri to shoot those three. Sure. You know what I mean? So that way it's, it's kind of an even playing field and you're really just in it for that specific airway, you know, flyways numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do you ever do that? How do you regulate that? How do you know that? Because there's different areas in Missouri that have like, Better honestly, just South numbers. of where I live, you really don't see geese all that often, but you go 10 miles North and they're just everywhere. Right. Yeah. That's I think tough. the limit should be anywhere from one to eight. <laughs> and everybody makes their own decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I know one thing that you wish that was an unlimited harvest rate are mice. Yes. <laughs> yes. I wish we had that clip. Yes. I like, oh my I like goodness! Stumble through trying to How do we that, not have that queued up? But uh. it's just we <sighs> Dakota's down there editing. It just got dumped, but. Um, for those of you that don't know, Aaron is not a fan of mice no. at, all. at all. The little field mice just get them. Just Any mouse. Any oh mouse. my God. Where, did this, has this always been like this or did you get like traumatized by no. it as a kid? No. Um, I've just always been this way. They're just, I've just, I've just never liked them. I, I, I actually, I feel like I'm getting better. Hey, you know what? <laughs> you did not jump out of the blind today. No. Yeah, you did true. stop the hunt. I yes. did stop calling. We, we were in the middle of calling geese, and he's yeah. like, nope, he's nope. Like, Forget these geese. There's <laughs> we going to handle this. <laughs> and what was funny was we saw, this, we saw this mouse pop up from the blind, and it literally took the run of the wood right at you. Like, I thought you, were, you would just run out of the pit. Yeah, no. I, he, he was getting, sliding down pretty quick. I, was, I did slide down next to Q. I mean, we were like, uh -huh. like we were close together because – I just, man, when it came out the first time and it was kind of crawling along our bags, like, I said, eh, that's okay. And then he was on Matt's calls. Like, he then, put his mouth on Matt's calls. Yeah. Like, I would have not blown that call the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, you have the haunt of virus now. Hey, he's the one that blew the calls after that. I did. So he, he I did. Patient zero over here. Yeah. <laughs> if I start, if I start getting real long teeth in the front, just yeah. shoot me. It was the, it, it was the Drake whistle, so... You're safe, but you might want to. You might want yeah. to wash okay. that thing off. Yeah. It'll be all right. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. I feel like we have some sort of mouse story every year. At <laughs> some point, so a funny. mouse is going to punk you. At some yeah. point. Sure. Like, yeah. We, well, sure. when you're in those permanent blinds like that, I mean, they're going to get in there. They're going to oh, use them at shelter. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you, you, you were talking about when you pull those pits out? Because, of course, like, that's a great place for a mouse to live, right? Yeah. It's out of the weather. It's warm. Like, have you just seen, like, hundreds of mice come um, out? Or, like... Not hundreds, but I mean, pretty fair teens amount. for sure. Yeah, so more than ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you, so, and I guess we didn't really talk about that. I mean, we kind of did. So, so you put those blinds in. You dig a hole. You put the blinds in the dirt every year. Every year. At the end of every season, you pull them back out and you fill the holes back in. Yes, sir. Right. So there's void space on the backside or inside, outside of those of those pits. Yep. And so when you lift that blind up out of there, there's been void space in there where those mice can get down there and live and exactly. and stay warm and yeah. Yeah. 
Aaron's going to get himself like a, a pet snake, and every time he gets on the <laughs> blind, he's going to let his snake go for a hunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a. I, I, but I don't know how you keep them. You know, I mean, There's I thought about like do. mouse repellent, but it a, it's just part of it. Exactly. Yeah, just part exactly. Of it. And, and I, we can cohabit as long as he they're not come at like you. coming at <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. He literally looked, he, I think you guys looked each other in the eye and he was like, oh, um, I was definitely um, <laughs> had my eye on him. No doubt. He's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go were, mess with this we, dude. We're all watching geese. We're all watching geese. And so you, if you guys see the footage, most of the time Aaron was sitting down in the pit. And we were kind of watching, filming, doing our thing. So he's trying to stay hidden. I was watching the whole time. I was well, watching Aaron the whole time. I was like, this is a show. Well, before, before <laughs> I'm just what I'm saying, like he's in the middle of calling. And he's, blah, 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 look at the size of that mouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, what? And I looked down and it's sitting on top of my backpack. And I was like, oh, so I just grabbed my calls and kind of flipped it with my calls. And he went back, went back down. But the first encounter. The first encounter. The second <laughs> encounter, he was on that rafter headed for your, yeah. headed for your nose. Yeah, he right. wasn't messing around that time. No, no, no. He's, yeah. like, he's like, oh, that guy called me out. I'm going to go get him. Speaking of mouse stories, it just kind of makes me think of a random thing that people might want to know. Like, what's some of the craziest stuff that you've seen over the years? Whether it's like a crazy bird. I know you got that cool band story from last year. Mm-hmm. Um, just what are some like cool memories that you have or there are crazy things that have happened? You, you got any that kind of stick out on top of your mind? Nothing. I mean, really nothing crazy. Um, which I guess is good and bad. Yeah. Um, like getting cows in goose pits is. I say, yeah, you've had a couple of cows you've had to have lifted and, out or whatever. And you've, was it like when you rolled in the hunt in the morning oh, and yeah. you went, oh no. I, I've had them, um, you know, some of the other guys, I know Rob, he's, he's had them and it's yeah. just kind of. You know, because we, we put the pellets on top of the pits when there's cattle in there, and it yep. kind of looks like a cattle guard so they don't get on there. But, yeah, I mean, like you roll up, and, like, you see the pellets kind of pushed off, and you're like, oh, all of a sudden your heart this just drops. Bad news. It's suspect. And sometimes they're not. Sometimes, you know, like yearlings will push the, the pellets off and, or whatnot, but you walk up there and got a cow sticking its head mm, out. Yeah. Just, oh. so, so what do you do? You yeah, how do you get that out? Go to a different pit. Go well, to, that's what it's called. Right. So you call the farmer and say, hey, there's a cow in that pit. We'll no. see you later. I try to handle it myself the yeah. best I can. Um, but are we, we talking like like bring a tractor in there and lift it out? Honestly, no, man. Um, so we have the solid tops on both sides. Yep. Um, either just break them, just pull them loose or unscrew them, flop them off to the side, and then just cut out one cross member. Okay. A lot of times, I mean, like they want out of there. So they're going to. Yeah, like they'll get at one end of the pit and turn around and like, and they just, everyone, everyone I've had go in, I've gotten out by myself. Okay. And they just. Phew, just take a flying leap and like they'll use the bench and hop yep. up on the bench and, yep. and then out they come. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's I mean it's a mess to clean up afterwards. But oh, I'm sure that's right. We've never had we've never had anything hurt. Never yeah. had broken legs. Never. I mean we've been just super blessed on that on that <laughs> front. But interesting. That's, okay. That's, that's one of the craziest things. Yeah. I I did see one man one time guiding. Uh, I was like, hey guys, there's geese coming. They're right out front. Get ready. Get ready. And this guy grabs his gun and. I didn't see him take the safety off, so he either had it off, which is super scary, yeah, or he took it off. But I just remember seeing the gun. I remember hearing the shot and the gun hitting the floor, and like he just turned and looked at me like, "Oh my gosh!" And I looked at him like, "If looks could kill, you know." And I yeah. was looking at him like, "You crazy son of a gun!" And but then I popped up and the ge- geese were still coming. And so just got back down and, and kept so on so it was a out. shot that went off he, he like not up out of the pit it went off inside the pit yeah I mean the barrel was up like okay. through the lids yeah but yeah I mean the shot I mean the shot went off okay through, through. have you ever have you ever had anybody that went off inside the pit never. anything like that never so Palumbo's had that a few times down there yeah. he he shoots you know those they were like those, his, the metal frames like custom built metal frame yeah. a frames basically yeah. no that just pieced together with pins and there's a giant indention in one inside and we're like. What's the story here? And he said, yeah, and the guy was, it was rested up against there. And I think he did the same thing. I think he clicked the safety off and put his finger in the trigger to grab the gun to stand up and fired it off inside, mm. bounced off that metal. And yeah. Did anyone get hurt? No, no nobody got hurt. But no ricochets? I, no. I, I think, I think Joe might have blown a gas. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that guy finished his trip. I bet not. Yeah. I bet not. I think it if is, that happened to me, I think, I think it'd be over and done with whether anyone was hurt or not. Yeah. I think we'd be picking up boys yeah. yep. and yeah. having a long it, talk about tomorrow. It is, yeah. it is a very, like I would say hunting out of a frames or anything like that. That's definitely the most dangerous thing. So a big thing for you guys out there, there's a lot of companies that make super cool. Um, we have ones that, fit over the bar of the a-frame and then ours are dual gun and they have they're like super heavy duty magnets yep 
So they fit. You set your gun up there, and I mean, you kind of like oh. yank that thing off the pole. It's probably the best thing you guys can buy for an A-frame. I, I'm sure multiple people make them. Uh, one in particular, OKC Falco sells them. Okay. That's who I got mine from last year and yeah. who I told Logan to go to. Yeah, they're they're very important because, I mean, we've all been in an A-frame when it got, you hear it go, shh, oh. and it falls off. And then everyone yeah, every, yeah, everybody's like heart skips a beat, it's man. Just, and they have magnets on them, too, so your barrel yeah, snaps yep. to it. Yeah. Right. Safety is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. So, Well, tomorrow uh, is our last day, and what we're going to do is actually after this, we're pretty well going to pack everything up, be ready to go, and then uh, we're going to leave once we get done hunting. Then we got you know a nice 10-hour drive home. You bet. So what's the plan for tomorrow? <sighs> um, man, you kind of put me on the spot on that one. <laughs> you're I, still, I th- a, you were still, you're couple, still thinking it. I have it. a couple options. Yeah. Um, but like, I know you guys want to cut out by 11 or so. So I'm, I'm just thinking, like, what's going to shoot the quickest? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's and, the challenge tomorrow is we're against and the you know, Based off of today, I mean, like, if we had all day, I'd say, shoot, let's just go eat breakfast and go out at 10. and Yeah, for you know, sure. And yeah. hang out. But um, we need to get some birds on the ground before you guys leave. So Yeah. And it's kind of going back to that whole, like, limit thing, too. We've had a phenomenal week. I think we've shot, like, 83 birds in, in Dude, three it's been hunts. it's been as, and, as good as it usually and is. And so it's one of those you know where, I mean? like, we're like, man, we, you know, we shoot 10, 12 birds. And then we're like, yeah, man, it's 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Like. I'm good. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. Like, yeah. I've had an amazing week. Again, we so. don't need to shoot limits every day, right? Like, Mm-mm. it's fine. I want to shoot a couple more singles, right? Right. And we got to get that quill. Eating it up in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we yeah. need a quill, we have and then... To get the quill. Yeah. I need, I need a, a couple of redemption singles. <sighs> I do. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not going to lie. I definitely can't wait to, to look at that <laughs> clip where you just... <laughs> Flew off three shots in a row and just did touch yeah. a feather. Yeah. No, the first the first one clipped him. You can see him kind of pull back. No, I'm not like no excuse. Like right, like I missed. He if you didn't oh, shoot him, he was going away. Right. So yeah, it was a it was a triple tap miss. Yeah. Not real proud of it, that. It is. It happens. happens. It does happen. It no two Especially, tap. <laughs> yeah, there was no two tap there. Mm-hmm. But no, that's what you're talking about. Like as even as much as like as often as we shoot and as much as we do and everything. Like we shoot a lot. Work very comfortable with you, right? You were tucked way down in the blind. I was I was good to to clear out safely over you and shoot that bird. But and I don't know if that's what it was, but that's still always in your head. You're like, oh, I'm shooting over somebody. So yeah. you're always just trying to hold high or hold farther forward or just to get that ink. You know what I mean? And so I don't know if that's what it was, but I, I missed three times. I whiffed big. We'll say that's what it was. But I will say the shot immediately before that, I rock that bird at whatever distance he was at. Sure. 9,000 yards. I literally mm-hmm. popped up and I was like, oh, he's going away. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> like, I was impressed. <laughs> that was a good one. See, so I get to, and that's what it was. I was I was still working on that seven foot lead. Yeah, that's why I missed the one when it was at ten yards. Yeah, that's what that's it was. right because the camera did it did look like you would shot in front of him. And like I said, you typically I typically do not see people shooting too far in front of birds. It's no, it's always behind. It's yeah. always, always behind. It's always behind. You mm-hmm. always see feathers blown out of their butts or just I mean wads are so far behind them. They're just yeah. yep. You typically don't see in front. Yep. Couldn't be me. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier towards the end of the day when you and dakota were shooting there was a lot of feathers flying through the air <laughs> yeah i shot pretty good yeah yeah no i mean you got i mean we so that's it yeah. so tomorrow tomorrow's the redemption day we yeah gotta get you here i hope gotta get you if here not it's been a fabulous time here i was like looking usual. i was looking real hard today at everyone i'm like come on Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to hand this gun to Q if I see one. We were out, we were out doing our scout stuff tonight, and we had plenty of time to sit there in glass. We I, well, I didn't see birds. a single quill. Yeah, we looked at a lot, a of, lot of birds tonight. Of, there was a, a lot, lot of birds one. around. Yeah, no quills. A couple fields were saving it for tomorrow. Very mm-hmm. very impressive with with the birds. Saw quite a few ducks tonight. It's a good yeah. night. Nice and a good year. Around. Yeah, and good. That's what we love to hear, right? We love knowing that you guys are having a good year and and things are going good, and you guys got. Shoot, what do we have, like three weeks left? It's like halfway of through what? January, right? What's the day, 13th? Oh, yeah, it's 13th, like Friday the 13th. 13th. It? it is Friday the 13th. Th- we have three weeks left in Missouri, and then we finish our last week in Kansas. Yeah. And they're and season. then the, and their season ends at the same time the as same. Kansas, yeah, too. We're yeah. about a month. Yeah. 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 Month finished strong. 12th of February, so. Good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Is it just going to be you tomorrow with us? Just me. Okay. 
Heck right. yeah. 18 same, back same group. 18 hey, back. I mean, I can sleep in and <laughs> send Jennifer with you guys. And sure. <laughs> Is she available tomorrow, Bria? Yeah. We got an open spot. I do that. Get her yeah. in the blind. We'll see how she feels. She yeah. came out that last day last year. That's, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems like every year she gets out with us one time yep. or try to. It's tradition. Yeah. yeah. So She z- might do it. Zach, if you're watching this, the A team's going to go out again tomorrow. He, <laughs> gonna happen. He likes to think he's he's the A team. He, you know what? He's pretty darn good. He's he's like the A A minus team. Hold on, sure. hold on. How how many birds did his group shoot today? Not as many as ours. Yeah, we'll just leave <laughs> it at that. Not quite as many as ours. <laughs> a team. Yeah. yeah well, there you go. The, yeah. <laughs> they didn't have the goose wizard with them. Hey. So, <laughs> and we did. So well, I mean, I I can't thank you enough. Right. Yep. Again, we we said this the first time. Like coming out here. We look forward to it every year. It's like coming Good. out and hunting with family, and we man, I wish you I wish we could do it ten times a year, you know. But it's definitely this the staple of at least my January. You know, I, mm-hmm. this is what I look forward to every January. It's coming wow. out here and doing this, and well, we appreciate it. We, yeah, I, I appreciate the kindness, and we appreciate your guys' friendship, and hopefully yeah. we'll. We'll just keep it going, man. Oh, we'll just absolutely. Mark it on our calendars and keep going forever. I, I think I say this every time, but I, I need to get back up here in the off season so we can go shoot some coyotes too. Absolutely, I need to get that done. Yeah. So there's a lot to do around here. It's an amazing place. Again, if you guys haven't ever hunted even remotely in this area, Wyoming, like check out High Plains Wing Shooters, Aaron Garcia. It's a great. You'll come in here as as someone new, and you'll leave his family. I mean, like you said, most of your guys are repeat clients, and that's for a reason because they come and they love the experience and they love being a part of the family and they love the hunting. So I highly encourage everyone out there to check it out. And, um, I guess this is the last podcast. So this is wrapping it up. Yeah. So we got one more day tomorrow. We'll knock them out and not check another year uh, off the list. Don't, don't forget, uh, quack lanyards. Yes. So remember, be subscribed to the YouTube, like comment. It's, gives you a chance to win a custom quack lanyards we will be giving that away tomorrow we'll pick a winner uh probably while we're hanging out and hunting and stuff we'll we'll pick a winner and either tomorrow during the hunt or on our way home Ooh, on our way home mm-hmm. you give us something to do on that nice 10 i think drive. we did our giveaway on the way home last year so okay but it'll probably be one of those deals yep so it gives you a chance to win a custom quack lanyard uh also we have a ton of uh heartland waterfowl apparel on clearance right now so heartlandwaterfowl.com backslash store check it out there's three new styles of hats brand new hats but go check out the clearance some of the stuff is like dirt cheap Mm -hmm. and it's all the cool old stuff Mm -hmm. it's all some of my favorite things so check that out and uh i want to appreciate you guys i want to appreciate you guys Mm. i appreciate you guys checking out the podcast thanks to tetra hearing for putting this on check them out tetrahearing.com and i guess that is it we will bid you guys adieu we're going to go eat some steak dinner, baby. Yes. Ribeyes. Yep. Big ribeyes. Big ribeyes. The Wyoming ribeyes. Yes, indeed. In, so. in a true cattle town. Let's get her done. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely.